Hi, I'm Bree and I was diagnosed with stage one ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative invasive breast cancer in 2013 at the age of 39 and stage four metastatic breast cancer in 2020 at the age of 46. I was given a very favorable prognosis with my stage one cancer with a very low risk of recurrence actually the lowest risk via the Oncotype scoring system was somewhere between 1% and 3%. So uh, when my cancer was rediscovered in 2020, it was pretty shocking. Um, I was told that we were talking, quote, years, not months, which was great, and that while many women live decades with the current treatment protocols and even beyond that, um, there was still too much that they didn't know about how and why drug resistance occurs, making an accurate prognosis impossible at that point. The advice, though, was to have my affairs in order around the five-year mark. I heard that, and I respected it, but I decided to get my life and my body in order first. So one of the first things that I said to my oncologist at the time was, I'm sure you have suggestions about what to eat and drink and what not to eat and drink and what I should do physically. What can I, what can I do to help um, fight this disease? It was still sort of a fight feeling in that moment at that time. What can I do to fight this disease? His answer completely stumped me in the moment, though. Um, I'm grateful for it now. He said, I don't recommend you do anything different than what you're doing now because you're fit and you're healthy. Just keep doing what you're doing. But this was the real kicker. And that was kind of nice to hear, but this was the real kicker. Then he said, and I'm of course, paraphrasing a little bit here. I don't like to encourage patients to feel like they have control of their disease. I don't like to encourage my patients to feel like they have control of their disease. And that blew me away. It was his notion that if I made certain decisions about my body, it would create an unhelpful level of stress and anxiety and personal responsibility in an already stressful situation, of course. I knew immediately, however, that this was not how I was going to move forward, um, nor how I would pursue survival. It just didn't sound or feel right to me at all. So I just completely rejected the idea that I had zero role to play in healing my own body. Completely rejected it in that moment. Needless to say, I immediately looked for another oncologist, but also began researching any possible connections between nutrition and cancer. That initial curiosity, feeling that there must be some relationship between what we put in our bodies and how cancer behaves, led me to resources that I had absolutely no idea existed. I had no idea they were out there. And eventually came across resources and information about things that were way outside just the foods that we eat and what we put in our body. So then with the assistance of an integrative oncologist um, and clinic that I quickly added to my team after some searching, uh, that took me a little while, a couple months probably, I immediately went from a meat-based keto-like diet to 100% um, vegetable overdosing vegan. So not just vegan, but like ODing on vegetables eliminated sugar, eliminated alcohol, which was a really big deal for me, and all refined carbohydrates. 
I began taking an extensive array of nutraceuticals, supplements, um, increased and redefined my physical activity, uh, which was wild to me. I was already pretty fit, but in a different kind of way. Um, I began a regular meditation practice. And gosh, maybe even most important uh, for my particular um, disease, I completely overhauled my relationship to stress and past trauma, which I had um, not a great deal, but a, a fair amount. Um, and that was through EDMR, uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy and psychotherapy. And I also incorporated things like rebounding and breath work and sauna protocols. So I use these therapies in addition to the standard of care through my conventional medicine oncologist. So this was all additional to um, the standard medicine protocols, which were and continue to be um, taking a CDK4 inhibitor and estrogen blocker, uh, uh, undergoing ovarian suppression therapy, and completing a four-week course of stereotactic body radiation therapy. Um, because I've tolerated the conventional pharmaceuticals very well with zero lasting side effects. There were some in the beginning, um, nothing uh, that I couldn't handle or nothing that was uh, interruptive to my normal life. Um, but those have since passed. I have zero side effects at this point. I'm still taking all those pharmaceuticals. I'm likely going to be staying on them indefinitely because they are uh, also relatively safe for me. So uh, chemo light is what my oncologist calls them. My chemo light drugs cost upwards of $9,000 a month. $9,000. Thankfully, due to the financial assistance programs through my hospital system, my copay is actually zero. The same is true for, for my um, ovarian suppression injections, which would cost me about $500 a month with insurance coverage alone. That's, uh, that's with coverage. The, all of this is with coverage. Pretty decent health insurance. Um, the injections would cost me about $500 a month, but is $0 with financial assistance. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm still paying, however, larger and ongoing costs for my initial diagnostic testing um, when I was first, uh, when they were first looking at and discovering my metastatic disease. Very extensive um, diagnostics, blood work and uh, scans, um, lots of imaging, biopsies and such. Um, and still paying as well for the radiation treatments and now regular thoracic abdominal CTs and bone scans. Um, and because my integrative oncologist is out of state, my health insurance only covers a small portion of my care there, which amounts to about $200 every consultation. And then my nutraceuticals are about $400 a month, which is a little challenging to sustain, um, but my vegan alcohol-free diet is far cheaper than my previous meat and booze heavy eating and drinking. So I think I've got an overall savings there of about maybe 25%, though it's hard to tell with inflation and I've got a family of five so, uh, you know, food cost is up there. Um, it took a, a really sizable amount of research on my own, by myself completely, to find information on the metabolic treatment approaches to cancer, uh, as well as other alternative supportive protocols. And even more time to figure out whether they were effectual and accessible. None of the complementary therapies were mentioned by any of my conventional doctors, not a single one. And reading about alternatives on the internet felt really scary and suspect. And there's a lot of information out there and it's really difficult to um, figure out what's 
real, what's science-based, and what's opinion-based, and what's just junk. So when I asked my current oncologist about complementary therapies, um, he was actually happy, said he was happy to work alongside um, my integrative team, was familiar with the integrative clinic that uh, I was using. This is uh, the Block Center for Integrative um, Cancer Care in Skokie, Illinois, um, which I'm happy to refer anyone to any day of the week. Um, so he was happy to work alongside Block Center um, and to freely share information, but he said he wouldn't feel comfortable um, giving opinions or guidance on any of their suggestions or protocols. And while I felt that this was a pretty reasonable response of him staying in his lane, um, you know, very responsible um, on his part, he also did tell me that he had patients who rejected conventional treatment entirely of fa in favor of alternative therapies and ultimately to really poor results. He spoke specifically of a woman who was treating her cancer with a vegan diet alone and was not doing well. Um, and I took that information uh, freely and, and was grateful for it, but that's also not what I was going to do, so I, it didn't freak me out. Um, I think because I was already really deeply committed to the concept of integrative care, I found his response actually, well, it was unsurprising. It was kind of validating. I was just pleased that he was open to working with my uh, complementary and alternative medicine team, um, whoever they would grow to be, you know, even outside of Block Center. And honestly would have quickly looked for another oncologist if he had answered differently. So the gist in my case is that he was and continues to be supportive, but he was still generally dismissive of any therapies that were unknown to him. And he sort of remains that way, um, in our relationship, but I accept that and, um, and utilize him for his expertise. And that is in conventional care and not uh, in any kind of complementary protocols. So I leave him in his lane. He stays in his lane and I leave him in his lane. I deeply, deeply believe that the metabolic treatments that I've used have not only reduced and mostly eliminated, in fact, I mean, at this point, almost completely eliminated side effects from my conventional treatments. But more importantly, they have also contributed to the success of those treatments. That to me is far more important, of course. I now have no evidence of disease about 18 months after my diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer. And all in, Pairing metabolic therapy with conventional treatment has turned back the clock for me, has reset the clock, in fact, allowing me to now work from a reestablished baseline of health that supports long-term maintenance at this point versus undergoing continual invasive and debilitating therapies that ultimately erode my, bod my body's ability to heal. Perhaps even more importantly, um, the metabolic therapies that I've included will continue to promote long-term healing and also prevent recurrences for as long as it's possible. A huge aspect of survival that is actually completely missing from conventional medicine protocols. There is very little about preventative medicine in conventional medicine, at least in conventional cancer care. Conventional treatments can and do stop the bleeding, which they did for me. But metabolic and more generally complementary treatments, as I've come to understand, strengthen the body to the point that it can sustain and even avoid future injury without the bleeding. I am 
furious about complementary and integrative approaches to cancer care being considered alternative by many and are unknown and inaccessible to most. It is maddening and sad and not to be believed. There are so many disappointing reasons access to these therapies and protocols are hidden and are discouraged and even attacked. Attacked. Um, I won't get into you know all of those reasons because there's a lot of them. Um, the relationship between pharmaceutical companies and conventional medicine as a profit-driven business. There's no money in green tea and turmeric, long grain politics, all these things. But they are also all completely unacceptable. It takes an inordinate amount of work, mentally, physically, and emotionally to sift through the universe of information out there that is culturally considered alternative, even though a whole galaxy of information within that universe could in fact save your life, my life, many lives. So it is absolutely 1000% necessary, 1000% crucial to be your own advocate. When I realized that I needed to treat my medical team as my employees and not the other way around, which it often feels like, that I'm the boss, I'm their boss, my entire perspective on my health care changed. My body, my decisions, my healing, your body, your decisions, your healing. It would have been much, much easier to leave my health to my physicians and to not be an active participant and instead be in, absolved of making any decisions and certainly of making any hard decisions. Easier but the consequences would be immense and fatal perhaps. And to me, that's absolutely unacceptable. (laughs) I want to live. I want to live my life. I want to live a longer life. I want to be here for my children and my husband and my parents and my family and for myself. That being said, it is incredibly difficult to listen to a licensed physician, one who spent a tremendous amount of money and time on their professional development, and to choose to disagree with what they're telling you while they're telling you, while they're looking in your eyes and telling you things that you know can't possibly be true for you. So what I found to be one of the most crucial tools in becoming my own advocate and what remains critical to my healing is respect for my intuition. No one knows your body better than you do. And if you feel your relationship with your body is in trouble or non-existent or you just don't know what your body is telling you at any given time, then that's a fantastic place to start. That's the place to start. Knowing and believing that what you're doing for your body and your life is a level of empowerment that no physician or clinician can give to you. No one can give that to you. Not a single other human on the planet can give that to you. Your body is engineered to heal And you hold all the power and control. Your body. It's not a cliche. 
that you often hear cancer survivors and thrivers talk about their cancer being the best thing that ever happened to them. Cancer can be a signal and a signpost and a redirection, a big freaking billboard <laughs> pointing in the direction of a healthier and happier and more fulfilling life. But it's completely up to you and up to us as uh, those living with cancer to choose and ultimately take that path. And then, even more importantly, to heal and to persist. To heal and to persist, to keep going. So I would say to anyone watching this, my story, I would say read, research, reacquaint yourself with your body, challenge the status quo, dedicate yourself completely and never look back. Your life is changed now and will forever be don't give yourself a plan B. Do not go back to the life that you once lived because it is different now. Live now your best life. And I promise you, you can do it.